Hey there, Saints fans. Going to have you another one right here. And this is coming on the heels of me seeing that 10-year, $500 million contract that Mahomes just signed. Like, my goodness. You go, sir. But uh, we'll talk about that during the podcast. This was asked by one of our longtime members of Marcus Davenport film study of every sack he had in 2019, following on the heels, of course, of the Cameron Jordan one that we just finished. Well, I have very high hopes of Cameron Jordan hopefully being a Hall of Famer. Davenport still has a lot to prove, even though we saw a tremendous amount of growth last season. Big thing for Davenport, stay healthy. Yeah, young buck, I'm going to need you to uh, get healthy. But if he is, we saw tremendous growth, as I said last year. I want to talk about how, and to do that, we got to go straight to the film room. Now, this one shouldn't take as long because there's obviously not as many sacks, but still some really good stuff to watch. As always, we're going to watch it in real speed first, and then we will slow it down after. Typically, you're going to see him right above me here on this weak side or the uh, left side of the offensive line. And away we go. Oh, it's just a good job. So what we have here is Atlanta's trying to run a quick slant right behind Davenport. So even though you don't have like the marker there, we're just, just assume that you've got a quick slant coming behind. So that means that the offensive line is going to try to run a little cut block and kind of take out Davenport and nail him to the ground. So what Davenport has to do from this wide nine technique, remember we talked about defensive line techniques. You've got zero to blah, 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 all the way out. Then you would have... Um, Six will be the tight end, so outside of it is nine, inside is seven. Don't ask why, just accept it. So because that slant's coming, he now has to recognize what the offensive lineman is doing. As soon as he sees the cut, he does the exact thing that you want him to do. He attacks that inside shoulder, pushing it down, avoiding the cut right there to his legs, keeps his balance, loses it just a little bit here, but keeps his balance, gets back up, gets into the throwing lane, and helps get out of the way. Now, it also helps that we've got really, 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 really sticky coverage right here, as well as Demario Davis peeking at the slant. So coverage is fantastic, but it's a good job by Davenport to get his hands up, see that big paw in the air, going after Matt Ryan and taking him down for a sack. So big positive there, exactly what you want him to do. So nice sack. And this is towards the end of the year where we started to get a little bit healthier and performed pretty well. All right, another one here against the Falcons because this was like a nine-sack game. Let's get back to the end zone angle right here. Once again, right above me at the top of uh, my head, outside, wide nine because he's outside the tight end. And then that's just not even fair, really. Like, that's – you shouldn't do that. Tight end has to go solo on him. Left tackle is going to drop back and cover that B gap. So the tight end has the primary block there. That's a mismatch. And then the running back's going to come. The t left tackle tries to break away to pick up after he passes on to the running back. And, yeah, not quick enough. Not able to get to him. So you got full barrel ahead of a very angry Marcus Davenport who takes down Matt Ryan pretty easily, I might add. It's not – you can't do this. Da Davenport is simply too big and too athletic for you to simply do a little chip block and then hope that your left tackle can get to him. You need a very athletic guy like a Davenport to finish that off. Look how he flattens his rush as he gets past the tight end. So is he looking flattened right here and then explode? Yeah, it's, that's not fair for you to ask anybody to make that. I, I wouldn't ask Ron Armstead to do that. That's just not fair. So now we're going against the Carolina Panthers. Once again, right above from a wide nine. They do this a lot. They've got Cameron Jordan slid in. From the wide, and he just uses power there. Oh, nasty, nasty, nasty. So let's talk about what he does. I love this push-pull here. So look at him attack. Does the same thing we talked about downport doing. Take the, I'm sorry, Cameron Jordan doing. Taking those two steps, then cutting inside to attack direct, which is typically what you see from a bull rush. But he gets hands inside. He's going to push, and then one arm yank down. Great development in terms of technique. We did not really see that a lot in his initial year in the league. And then he flattens out, go after the quarterback, big man, strong man, nasty. Let's watch it again. One flaw that we do see here is he false steps. So this is a problem that we've seen him do from a two-point stance. He cleared that up a lot, but we will see a false step right here. False step simply being a step that you take does not give you forward momentum. So watch that right foot. See how it goes up and down in that same spot? It might not seem like a lot, but you losing two-tenths of a second can be the difference between a sack and a no-sack. But love the technique here. Engage inside. Get a hold. Not holding, but get a hold of them pads. 
and then yank what you get the separation, which is exactly what he does, a little push-pull, and then go kill the quarterback, which is exactly what he does. Beautiful play here. Watch it one more time in full speed. Pretty, 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 pretty. Next up, as this fly goes around my face and annoys the heck out of me. I hate the summer. I hate it. Tampa Buccaneers earlier in the season. Going against Jameis Winston. So two-point stance here from a seven. So he's kind of closer in to that left tackle. He's going to do an inside move and just bully ball there. Bully ball attacking inside. And this is something I wanted them to do more of, him being the inside guy in the twist game. So you're supposed to get your interior defensive lineman here coming outside. That's David Onyemata, which you essentially have as a twist here. So Davenport's supposed to attack inside. Onyemata's supposed to wrap behind. Onyemata gets caught up in some trash. Fly, please go away. In the name of Jesus, be gone. But Davenport just does a great job of collapsing the inside through the le left tackle. Onyemata's not able to really cross forth, but it doesn't matter. Just barrels on through. And gets a sack. Pretty. Very pretty. Another one here against your good old Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This time, he's on the opposite side. They don't change sides for him. And this is just a very nice long arm using extreme power, great leverage. Watch his hips get low. We'll come in and just bull rush this dude with a long arm. And see, no false step this time. Look at the feet. It's a straight drive. And I'll tell you, that is what you need to get your momentum going and really a, and explode into your attack. Look, see that left foot, how it's a consistent one-two step? And now we're attacking with the long arm. It gets him completely off balance with great placement. Aiming point was correct. You want to aim at that in, inside shoulder to get him off balance because you get him that inside shoulder. He's already moving back in his vertical, so that's going to take that natural momentum he has and get him off of his balance. That's exactly what he does. Turns into a bull rush and goes straight into Winston. Beautiful play. Exactly how you want it to be drawn up. And the final one here of the season, this is number uh, six or number one since we're going backwards, is against the L.A. Rams. And this is him being a monster of a dog, just showing off that athletic ability. Let's go ahead and fast forward here. So wide nine, see him right there, putting a wide receiver on him to try to contain him on the edge, which doesn't make any sense at all. None at all. And, of course, he does what you would expect him to do. Fly right through it, dominate with one arm, and just get nasty. Just get nasty. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Does a fantastic job here. Mm, that's just not even fair. Why would you do that? Don't draw that up ever again. So I think Marcus Davenport had a very good season. If he could have been healthy, he had the potential to be an eight to ten sack type of a player. Sadly, he wasn't able to reach that because of the health issue, and that has been an issue for him in recent years. And I'm hoping and praying that our man here can be the guy that we want him to be. Still, not a bad season. Missing some games here or there. We know that that was going to be an issue with him because he's had injuries here in the past. If he can get to a full, complete season, because he played 13 last year, 13 the year before. If we can start getting to 16, we'll really start talking about Davenport being a guy that you can consistently see as a double-digit sack player. We've seen the athletic ability. We've seen the jump in terms of technique last year, and we showed a few different ones. The push-pull, the long-arm attack. We know he had a great bull rush. The inside moves that he has, starting to work on it and perfect, not false stepping from his two-point stance. An even more dominant player when he's got his hand in the dirt. We saw a lot of versatility growth. The main thing is just keeping him healthy. But for the most part, we saw great improvement in Marcus Davenport's play. And if you go into season three, which is the year that you look for all of these players to really explode, to hit their, you know, their growth spurt in terms of being that starter that you expect them to be in the NFL, this is the year for him to grow and be that guy. A lot of times players have sophomore slumps, whereas he actually improved, going from four and a half sacks to six sacks. And technically, I think um, he had a couple of opportunities there where he had, a, I think, what, six more quarterback hits this year. Uh, and right around the same tackles for loss, he had three forced fumbles compared to one. So you saw statistically him improve in every way that you look for from a player at that position going from year one to year two. So no sophomore slump, got better. And I think that you can look to see that same thing in 2020. At least that's the hope if you're a Saints fan and if you're Ryan Nielsen, the defensive line coach for the New Orleans Saints. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I that you like it. Hit that subscribe button so that we can have more videos like this and you can get notified if you ring that little bell right there or actually over there. So that you can see more videos, podcasts, film studies, all that great stuff. 
And finally, if you want to help support the channel so that more videos like this can come out, we have a great bunch of supporters, but it's the summer. We definitely need your help. Had to replace the roof, and that means you're paying for it. Who dat? <laughs> Love you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Who dat? God bless. Peace out.